Let's be the chapter one. Where's your turn? Let's be the chapter one. Uh, Someone who was singing that song said, uh, I'm going to stay in the Church of Christ till I die. Upon hearing the uh, one's death, uh, many times we uh, are inclined to ask the question of what, what, what happened, what they died from. I believe a more relevant and more important question was asked, where did they die? Where did they die? And I'm not talking about in the physical sense. I'm not talking about the place on the map, the location. I'm going to stay in the Church of Christ <laughs> until I die. <laughs> Y'all heard about Brother Bishop's death? I pray that if you ask that question, where did he die? They said in the church of Christ. Yes, died in the Lord. That's why they did. They mm -hmm. died in the Lord. Yes, the first in the sight of the Lord, the death of the saints. Yes, right. So yes, we yes, all want to go that way. Except <coughs> unless he comes back first. And it's about where did you die? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's keep that thought in mind. First Peter chapter 1, verse number 1. Uh, it says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethlehem. He says, in fact, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and strengthening of the blood of Jesus Christ, Peter says, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to this abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faileth not the way be served in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God to faith and salvation, better to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, though not for a season of need be, be our heaviness to manifold temptations. That the trials of faith in which for precedent of gold that perished, though it be tried with fire, may be found to praise and honor and glory at the period of Jesus Christ. Peter says, whom have not seen, he loved. And whom, though now you see him not, they believe him. You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. He goes on to say, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. When it comes down to it, at the end of the day, it all goes back to the salvation of the soul. Amen. Then he speaks about of which salvation, verse 10, the prophets have inquired and have searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Search of what or what amount of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Mm -hmm. Peter says, Wherefore, girl of the loins of your mind, he said, Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that does to be brought unto you and the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because in this written, be ye holy, for I am holy. And then verse 17. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of person judge according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Watch verse 18. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but here's the key with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without Spot. That word redeem uh, means to buy back, to purchase, uh, to bring back, to buy back. I remember as a little kid.
need uh, go out to the country some we would get those soda bottles and uh, go eat, drink that soda on a hot summer day and pay about, I think about 15 cents for a soda. I think I remember exactly about 15 cents for a bottle back in the price range. And then after that, I took that bottle, man. You didn't throw that bottle away. You didn't like somebody did on our park lot over here. You could break the bottle and all that damn stuff. You didn't do that foolishness. Well, that, that bottle had value. Amen. And you did enough of them. I thought about five. You go get you another soda that was done. <laughs> and then somebody else said, that's done. They're finished. You can pour that stuff out. You can see where you're putting tired of this stuff. And you know, wash it out of these boys. What are you doing? You redeemed it. You went and the person gave you money for those bottles. To redeem means to purchase, to buy back, to bring back. And as I thought about this lesson here, I thought about the price that it was paid, the price that it took to redeem us. God wants us back. That's why I talk about the people talk about the saving of the soul. God wants us back. Mm -hmm. He wants to redeem us, but he didn't just send out a call saying, I'm going to redeem them. When, he, when, this, when this message went out from God, he put forth the greatest that he had. Amen. That's right. He sent forth the best That's right. in order to redeem us. And what does this do for me as a child of God? It, it helps me to understand my true worth, my true value. Man, if you listen to the wrong people long enough, you won't think you're worth anything. Right. Amen. You have yourself a message to not worth anything. Right. Mm -hmm. I listen to the wrong people talk, but, but that stuff just, 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 just like they say, one off the ducks back or something, they roll off, mm -hmm. or falls back or something like that. But that stuff just roll off me. Because I recognize my value because I'm a child of God. Yes, and I recognize that there was a price paid for me, for my soul. And I recognize the, the, the enormity of that price, how huge that price was that was paid for me to bring me back, to redeem me. Find that song, uh, I'm just a nobody, I'm trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Some people that look at that song, and, 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 that's, and that's true, that's the, that's the level of humility we must have. Right. But at the end of the day, we're not just a nobody. We're somebody, amen. We are children of God. We have been purchased with the blood of the Son. We will, we will not be thin. We will not go back like the rest of things as silver and gold. And a lot of times we put a whole lot of value on silver and gold on But when it comes to our soul, those things are the bubble. That's right. But it talks about but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the value of something? You never know if you get a good deal or not, you know. Mm. You go in the store and see some uh, you know, two fifty a piece. I'm not paying no two fifty. They put four, four for ten dollars. Oh, we stack up on. Come down to two dollars. Come down to three dollars. Pass it back there. I got me a deal. They want two fifty a piece for the whole thing. I think mine. I just got four for ten. <laughs> Do we ever really know the true value or something? I got, I got a little 1996 uh, uh, Ford Ranger. It was my first truck. And Lisa, she told me, she's traveling, she listened to it. She's like, I want that truck gone. It's in the backyard now. And I keep saying, I'm going to go around and fix it back up. But, but I don't want to take anything back to that little truck. <laughs> hmm. I think it has a certain value to me. You mean? I have appraised it, which <clears throat> what I think it's worth. Uh -huh. And somebody else may not think it's worth it. Mm -hmm. so, so what is the true value of something? In many cases, we want to know the value of something, we go and have it appraised on it. Right. Put it at a piece of property, and, you know, you have to get an appraisal done on it. You don't want to overpay for it, you know. You look at a bigger, you go to the head of the book, uh, the other ones and stuff, and you try to get as close as you can, Jamie, and you know, try to figure it out. That's, you don't want to overpay for it. But at the end of the day, what is the true value of something? The true value of something it's what the one who's purchasing it is willing to pay for. It. That's the true value. 
But I can't say, well, man, that little 1894 Wrangler, that ain't money right now. Hell can't do a beat it all up. Got bird nests and stuff in now. Got bird nests on cup in it. All kinds of stuff. But, but, but what I value, what I, I, somebody else won't value it that. But if somebody else comes along and says, hey, and they drop the pipe down, I'm like, you know what? My value just changed. You know? Now we want all your value. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so now that's the true value. But they are willing to pay for it. So an appraiser is an expert estimate of the value of something. And how valuable is any given object? What's the true value of any given object? It's the value of what an individual is willing to pay. So that's why I find it hard to believe that I don't have no value. Because I understand what was paid for me. I understand the price that was paid to redeem me back. And I'm so grateful that God put such value on our souls. And what our soul was and what it is worth. He put such a value on our soul. So I don't allow someone else to define who I am and tell me I'm not worth this and worth that. A lot of times people don't even know you. It's one of what they done heard, and they may not even be what they heard. It's just, it's just what they think. Amen. But what's our true value? As a child of God, we are so valuable that he was willing to send his only son, and the son was willing to lay down his life. So as I stand here, as I prepare to close this message this morning, I want you to think about how uh, our cause came to be. How our value came to be. Where did it come from? We have been appraised of God. Mm -hmm. God set the value. God set the value of us. And this wasn't an afterthought. The term that counts in four dollars of God. This wasn't just, hey, let me, I don't know. We already had this thing already planned. Figured out. Who is going to do what in the grand scheme of things? And the Son, Jesus Christ, the ultimate sacrifice, came and gave his life. Yeah. God appraised us and made a decision that the price of our souls, look at that, is equal to the life of his Son. So if you think you are not anything, I don't know how you can possibly do that to your child of God. I just say you have no value to your child God. You haven't been baptized in the water for the mission of sin. You've been added to the body of Christ. And you say, there's a nobody. In the spirit of humility, yeah, that's good. But when it comes to your value, you're somebody, amen. Okay. You've been purchased, you've been redeemed. You've been brought back by the blood of the Son. Look at a couple of scriptures here that we're going to close this morning. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. When we talk about this price, this value, what was placed upon us. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 7, it says, In him we have redemption. Through his blood. I may have you have heard the term that, that you know somebody said, man, I, I, I got this, I built this place, man, we built up this farm and stuff, and it was through a lot of sweat and blood. And we understand what they're saying, don't we? But many times, was it really through blood? In the case of us being redeemed, that's the case. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's what actually happened. We were redeemed at the price of his blood. Jesus said in well, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, our sins, according to the riches of his grace. Who does that? Who does that? Who does that? Don't see that car shield of virtue in Who does that? You talking about the good one that he got? He said, I got a new transmission, a new motor, mm -hmm. I got a new car, I got a new brakes. I said, I got a new car. 
He said, who does that? Who else is going to shed their blood for a second time? I know we can talk the talk sometimes. But then when it's time for the walk. <laughs> but Jesus gave his life a ransom. He <clears> shed his <throat> blood. No one else. That's why when you start talking about allegiance, start talking about allegiance, and, and people in these false religions and stuff, I'm like, what, what religion? So called religion. Did the God himself give up his life? Think about it. What is it? A so-called religion. Did the, did the night of himself, did he give up his life? The magnificent one. The creator. What religion? But Jesus gave up his life. It talks about we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins according to the of the grace. Romans chapter 3 verse 25. Romans chapter 3 verse 25. Romans chapter 3 verse 25. It says, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation, that's the one to whom we're supposed to talk about Jesus Christ. He was put on public display. Who would do that? Mm. We have been a praise of God. Now we are a value. Amen. We are a value. Yes. Yes, Don't let anybody beat you down with their words, their actions. We are children of God. He put his son on public display as a propitiation in his blood through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness because in the fervor of God, he passed over the sins for to commit. He laid down his life for something we already done. He laid down his life for things that we would do. Who would do that? Mm -hmm. so a lot of times people say, I tell you, I forgive you for, for what you did then. Do something else. Now we look, do something else. Yeah, got something for you. But when Jesus laid down his life, that wasn't just for what we had done. That had to do with what we might do. Amen. How much value can you see a tide into that? I'm not just going to forgive those. And even you who have me on this cross, I want to be of this, and then when you mess up down that way, or if you mess up, I want to be willing to forgive that. Mm. That's value, y'all. Who, who does that? He does that for us. How often? Amen. Please, God. How often? We sing that song. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over. Y'all remember Peter? In uh, Matthew chapter, uh, I think 18 it was. He, he wanted to say, you know, Jesus, seven times? <laughs> Peter, the Lord, how often shall we forgive our brother? Seven times? Peter said, if two is required in the mall, the double something when you, you know. Mm -hmm. I know the sugar seven is good. Jesus and nah. I, put limits on yourself. Put limits on our blood. He said, you keep on giving it. Yeah. And that's what he does for us. Right. Over and over and over. That shows the value that we have in the sight. I'm not going to send my son to die for you. And then you mess up one time. <clears throat> Amen. We are valuable brothers and sisters. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. I got this on my lesson in the uh, NIV, but I like the way it reads. You know. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. It says, Who have delivered us? Go back to verse 12. 
giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Mm -hmm. right. that he has on us. He appraised us. They are valuable to me. Y'all remember Satan? He said, you know, let, let, me, let, let me lose on about making a Christian. Mm -hmm. God said, you can do whatever, but don't mess with life. Amen. But he said, I know as long as he's alive, he'll bounce back. <laughs> he'll be back. He'll bounce back. Value he has placed on us. He says, uh, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The value that God has placed on us, that ought to encourage us to do better. Amen? Amen. We can do better. Amen. We can always do better. Mm-hmm. I always talk to people. I said, we can do better. And when we know better, we do we better. We can set out to do better. That's why this is important. That's why Bible class and things like that are important. When we know what God's word says, we have a better understanding, and we can set out and do it. And live up to what he did for us. We will never be able to repay him, first of all. But to make every effort, and his death would not have been in vain. He died for me. He gave up his life. God placed such value on my soul that the son came and died for me, and then I go and live any kind of way. I can't never pay him for what he did. I can't. But I can at least set a fount. And it's in me. I have control of it. Some people, Brother Bishop, know what they did. And? And? We have no control over anybody else. But we do have control over ourselves. And one of my constant prayers is that I don't allow anybody to push me to the point. Because <laughs> people will push you. Yeah. Or they push you. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Even church folk. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. Sometimes we push each other. Amen. But tell yourself, look at what Jesus did for me. Just because you push me, don't mean I got a fall. Amen? Yeah. Just because you push me, don't mean I got a fall. I could be vigilant. I could be messed up. I could stand strong. I may even stumble a little bit, but I don't have to fall. And when I think about the price that he paid for me, it encourages me even more. It should encourage all of us. Because people will push. Amen? Amen. People will push. People don't even know. I was going to pick up Taylor from school the other day. I didn't tell him about it. I didn't tell him about it. But uh, I turned off of uh, uh, Greenwood. Turned to the street down by the uh, Chinese place. It takes you to the north side high school. Uh, Carrie, Peter Street. Yeah. Peter Street Street. He drive up also, but you know. <laughs> But, but I see this woman standing outside of another car. The light that they had, they had the red light. And she's standing outside this car. Well, she's giving this woman in the car. Ooh. She was giving it to her. Mm. I'm thinking, boy, that's unseen and that is dangerous. Because people will shoot your face off. Mm -hmm. and that's worse than later. Yeah. She had allowed, I don't know what happened. But when we stand outside that woman's car, streaming into that woman's car, and the woman, I don't know why she had the window down. Mm. Oh, she never let the window down. And you stand in it? And you look straight at it? Okay? Mm. Now, probably sitting there screaming through the window, hopefully they'll get the clue to go back. Yeah, that's mm. okay. Yeah. But then I see you giving the woman what for, she turns around and walks away and then flips a cigarette back there. Mm. And gets in her car and I pass by and her little mouth is still going. She lets somebody just push her way too far. I don't know what happened. Who was that fault? But we have control of ourselves. Amen. We have control of ourselves. We 
have to be in control. That's why the scripture talks so much about being sober minded. We have to be sober. We have to be thinking right and don't allow situations. And, and they come. Brother Bishop faced a lot of different situations, y'all. Yeah. I'd be like, well, I hope to take the one in. He'd be like, is that Brother Bishop? <laughs> I get that. I get that. I get close to that sometimes. And then I start to think. I think about, don't see Brother Bishop. <laughs> yeah. We have to be able to control. Amen. We can't control other people. We can't control ourselves. Amen. And the scripture teaches as much as I in you, live peaceful with all men. Especially those household faith. But look at what was paid for us, the price that was paid for us by our souls. And allow that to encourage you. He gave his life for us. And as I close here, first Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. I want us to remember that we, we, were, we were bought with a price. It wasn't just in our price. God appraised the situation. And he said, what can I, now this is just me thinking now, thinking out loud. What can I do so that there is no doubt in anyone's mind of the importance of the soul of man to me? Y'all yeah, remember I mentioned on last week how you could, uh, someone come to you and say, hey, I need you to offer up a sacrifice either yourself or your child. Mm -hmm. But the easy thing would be to do what? Self. <laughs> you only got one child. You're only begotten. You're only one of a kind. And somebody say, hey, here's the deal. You and them. Make your choice. The easy thing would say, hey, take me. Leave my child alone. That's the easy answer, right? That's not what God did. That's right. He didn't take the easy. That's right. And as a parent, most of us would say, take me. Take me. That's the easy way. Right? Mm -hmm. That's not what he did. The value on our soul. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says, uh, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? Oh, as a child of God, mm -hmm. we don't own ourselves. Sure don't. You know, like having a house. You never own it, but you only pay taxes on it. Uh huh. Anyway, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, they just got bad all over again. I never own my house. <laughs> I think I pay taxes. No. Don't you to a certain age? <clears throat> no, you just keep on going. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have been bought with a price. Not just a price, though, but the price. He says, therefore, glorify God in your body. It's a reminder, another reminder, that we have been appraised and we have been purchased. Hebrews 9.14, as I close, Hebrews 9.14 says, how much more? Oh, he was talking to the, uh, the Hebrew, the Hebrew was talking to the, the Jews. He said, hey, you know, we all talk about turning back to this other stuff. But I gotta get you to see something. And he's like, hey, if I get you to get you to see this, maybe hey, this will be the thing that'll get y'all to stop turning turn, turn back to what you came from and be thankful for what you got. Amen. Maybe you can see it this way. He says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, how much more with the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself? There's no guessing about what transpired. Right. There's no guessing about that Jesus really gave up himself. Yeah. We start talking about a ransom for many. We start talking about uh, 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 all of himself. Mm -hmm. There's no guessing involved. There's nothing that left to guess about. You can ignore him. There's nothing that left to guess about. We look at what Jesus did. He gave himself. It was the blood of Christ. The purpose was to finish your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. We have been appraised, and the true value of something is what someone is willing to pay for. 
I read a story the other day that uh, I think the last jersey that Michael Jordan wore in that last championship they won, I think that thing went for like three million dollars. It's still on the shelf. <laughs> It's been $200. <laughs> we got anybody. Brother Bishop Omar sitting in the audience. Yeah, it ain't worth that to me. It ain't worth that to me. That's to me. Good. What's the matter? So then, how much did it cost to pick that thing? $8 or $15? Have made it time. $2. $2. And it charged $15 for it? Mm hmm. They got it far out of it. Somebody paid $3 million. <laughs> Something like that. I know some of you fans, y'all know exactly. $3 million. Wow. The value on that jersey was what someone was willing to pay for it. And somebody, to them, that's a value. Now, somewhere down the road, two, three years from now, you probably read a story for somebody else to pay $5 million for it. Based upon what it's worth to that person. God pays our souls. And He sent the Son to die for us. So hold your head up. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop always. You know, that's, not, that's not us. Children of God. Do we have different times? Yes. What's the person where I get the fifth time? Yes. What's the difference? They have different, different times, I have different times. What's the difference? The way we handle them. Who we are allowed to be in control. And no matter how your situation turns out, if you believe God's word, all things work. No matter how your situation turns out, and you say, boy, that's like that's a complete 180 from what I thought. But guess what? God had other plans. And there was something involved in that situation that you may never know about. But God was in control. And he values us. Amen? How much value is on us? The true value is what God was willing to pay for. That's the sign. And he did it through his blood. And speaking of that blood, that blood cleanses us from all <coughs> sin. And that's a continuous process. Not only did it clean us up, took care of our past sins, but if, if, the same blood is still in the back. And if you're here this morning, you're not a child of God, I brought you to come on. I've been obedient to the gospel of Jesus Christ. How many times are you going to do the same thing over and over and over? And be willing to say, you know what? This is it. My mind is good. I run, I run, I can't, I can't stop running. And nothing is like the gospel price. Nothing will change your life like the gospel price. If you obey the gospel price and truly believe the teachings of God's word and set out to follow God's word, it will change your life like nothing else. Amen. You need to understand that what you have done upon being obedient to the gospel of Christ it will change your life in such a way that nothing else ever would. Amen. Nothing will ever come close. But you've got to have the right understanding. You've got to have the right understanding. I'm a man who had been uh, beating his wife, abusing her and stuff, and uh, eventually uh, the father, well, the wife's uh, father came and said, you know, you hit my daughter for the last time. She's coming home with me. He took his daughter from that abusive man and took her home. And then as time went by, the same fellow showed up. Knocked on the door. Father said, what you doing here? I'm good for my wife. He said, you're not going to get her. Because you've been abusive to her. He said, no, I've never been abusive to her. He said, you, you beat her. He said, I never have. Never have her. He said, you cheated on her. I never have cheated on her. Lost your mind? He said, I've never done any of those things. He said, I went and I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. All my sins were forgiven. The old me was buried. There's a new me standing before you, and I came to get my wife. 
sound like you're lying. Huh? But you know what he had? He had a good understanding. Amen. And I was talking to that father. He said, you are a man. You're not that same man. Here's your, here's your wife. He had a good understanding. When we get that kind of understanding about what the gospel will do for us, our lives will change. Amen. It's going to change a person's life and situation. They may be broke. And I think they've been baptized. They may still be broke, but it's a different kind of broke. Amen. They may be homeless. But after they're baptized in Christ, they get good understanding. They may be still homeless, but it's a different kind. Of, everything changes. Amen. Because then they understand. You understand that God is in control. And now those things that were hindering me that seemed to take up all my time and energy and effort, those things are put back and now folks are going to serve God and watch things change in your life. Amen. I see paid for. If you just want to try to child of God, first Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, leave out the past of the Bible. Jesus died on the throne of the world and he goes to give oh. up When you hear that story, you want to believe it? Have a change of mind It's called repentance. Repent of your sins. Be willing to confess you believe Jesus Christ as the Son of God and have your sins washed away in the water of great baptism. You see, there's a Holy Spirit to come up to add to the body of Christ. And Jesus said, be faithful unto death, and I give time life. Watch your life change. Watch things change in your life. You may not have two dollars more than you had before. Well, not that You may be on a job that you've like before. You're still on a job that you've like before. But now you've got a mindset. Everything changes when you obey the gospel and you speak that understanding from God's word. It changes things. Amen. It changes things. And the people around you may still be the same people, but you are changed. And watch God work in your life, even on some of them devils. Amen? Amen. Even on some of them devils. But it's not going to go unless you try, right? Amen. Not going to go unless you try. Now, a child of God, that takes you short. Your child of God, you need to pray for yourself or someone else. You ready to stand by? You're filthy, you're filthy. 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 You're filthy.